Good morning everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world in the off-grid project and this is why we moved into the tiny house. 41 degrees outside, 65 inside. We had the windows open. I um, didn't realize that or it would be warmer in here. Um, feels chilly to me at 65 but I think I'm getting spoiled here in the uh, our little tiny cottage. Um, but it was in the 40s, maybe even low 30s last night. It's 7 o'clock in the morning now. And um, with windows open, it's 65 degrees inside. And that is why we moved in here. Because the trailer, oh boy, if you left the windows open in the trailer at that temperature, it would be cold, cold, cold. Um, on a good day, it was only 10 degrees warmer in the trailer than it was outside even with the windows shut and this is with no heat so very very nice good morning everybody Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project I've got all my equipment out and I was experimenting here off camera um, I didn't want to start showing you anything I didn't know what it was doing but I um I got that pitch right. Look at that. I got that peak to butt up right on each other. Really nice and tight. Um, what did I do also? I put, well, I put on the rafter. Uh, it's not nailed or anything up on the peak. It's resting. But I did spike in with my framing nailer on the two ends. All right. I've got to cut these off later. Okay. And I put in a piece of frame for the doorway. And that's all I've done this morning. I was just experimenting. And um, I've got my framing nailer out. And I, uh, yeah, I've got that figured out. Sorry, my head is a little bit slow. I've been awake since 5 o'clock the last two days in a row. So a little bit tired. Anyway, I've got the beginnings of the frame for the door. And I've got to cut some pieces and come across here. And that'll close in this wall just like I did there, there, and there. And I've got the boards out, so I'll be doing that in a minute. Anyway, just wanted to show you what I was up to so far. Perfect sunny day. Not a cloud in the sky, but I think it's going to be a scorcher again. So I'm going to try to hurry up and get going. I don't know if I have enough boards for the rafters, though. Um... It's looking tight. It's looking really tight back there. So I think for now, sorry if you hear any clunking, it's the lens cover on the camera bouncing on the tripod. For now, I'm going to go, I've got enough for the, t the three um, outer ones. And maybe I might just get one here and one here and then later add more in as I can get some wood. But at least now if I have to, if I get those few in, I'll be able to pop up a tarp if it freezes until I can afford the uh, roll of plastic, like I said the other day.
Well guys, I just noticed when Melanie helped me put this in, I did that off camera, and I don't know why, but I did not center it. It is off center. I need to put that back in the right place. I could visually see it. You could clearly see it was off center. It's not touching the ground properly, which was a problem. The weight of the roof needs to come down and push on that. That was why I put it down. It's, uh, the board on top is work pulling that off the ground. Once they get the rafters on, that'll be pushed down. I think I'll leave that for now and uh, come back to it. That center beam is not um, touching the ground. It's cut to the same length, but the top board is warped. So I'll have to get some weight on there and then I'll uh, nail that in place. Well, I've got two rafters on. I've got material for two more. So I'll put one in the middle, one here, whatever, and then see what I can scrape up after that. And then the best I can do for the day is close off to last that back wall and then do the door over here. And that'll be pretty much it until I can find some more um, of these uh, one or two by sixes. So as I sort through the wood, I'll see what we can find here. That metal piece is settling in a little bit more, so let me see if I can uh, nail it in place. Yeah, that's lined up better now.
<sighs> locks on that side. I still got to get the bottom piece on the other side. And I might come a little higher on the bottoms to stop rodents, like I said the other day. We'll see. I have to watch the sun. I don't want to shadow the plants in the corners, like up in this front corner, by making the boards too high. I just cut a couple branches down because, I'm, I don't know if you noticed, but I kept squeezing around here and it was rubbing on the back of this terribly, which we don't want when the plastic's on there. And now, when we're in the chalet, we can look out into the backyard and observe everything safely. So, because the chickens are right there, and I want to be able to see through to the chickens at night and make sure they're safe. Now we'll have a perfect view throughout the whole backyard. Hey guys, I've got both my uh, Sunjack light sticks out in the sun charging. There's the Sun Tactics folding solar panel and the Sunjack folding solar panel with the light stick mini. So I've got my two folding solar panels out, my two Sunjack light sticks uh, charging. So, sorry, I don't know if I showed that quite well. I can't see the display. It's really bright out. But anyway, we're using these inside the tiny house now for lighting rather than using the, um, the electric lighting which are on the grid but we try not to use the grid as much. or We try to use the grid as little as possible. The solar panels over here are powering everything we need by day but at night, we don't have any backup at this time. Therefore, I store everything during the de daytime that I can. Uh, portable lights, charge your uh, laptop battery, and charge a cell phone and everything else. Well, they're powering everything. Now again, there's just an extension cord running over there that we plug in whatever's needed at that time. And the refrigerator is being powered by the solar panels during the daytime. So. We're trying to save power. Not as hot today. 82 outside. Um, still pretty hot in the sun. The um, weather station keeps saying rain, but I don't know, it's sunny. So anyway, uh, 70 degrees in the chalet, our tiny house. It stays between 64 to 70 degrees day and night no matter what the uh, temperature is outside, which is pretty good, much nicer than the trailer was. Hey guys, Melanie just whipped together some food for the GoSun solar oven. I'm going to bring it over here and get it out in the sun since it's a beautiful clear sunny day. And by the way, it is scorching hot. I came in for a break here. And it's 89 degrees and 74 inside. It's getting hotter inside. So, uh, pretty brittle out there right now. So this is just something Melanie threw together. I'll go slip that out into the uh, solar cooker. And we'll have dinner. Dinner cooked for free. 
there's yet another way we use solar power here at our off-grid homestead. Power of the sun, charging devices, running devices in the house, cooking. I like it. Hey guys, I found this uh, 11 inch by 12 foot board in my wood pile. Now this is one that I had got recently. I announced this the other morning in the, uh, was it? No, a couple, about a week ago I got this. I announced when I got this from a, a friend helped me bring it over. And I've got two more pieces. Didn't bring them yet. Anyway, uh, two more pieces that'll equal 11 feet. And I've propped up some braces here on the wall and in the corner. Now I've got to prop up another brace here. And then I'm going to attempt to see how this looks for a shelf to hold all my garden plants that we've saved so far. So bear with me. I'm going to put up another brace and we'll try this out. Okay, I'm going to attempt to maneuver this into place. Um, there's nothing over here to support, support it on the, on the end. So I have to make a frame, but I want to get it in place and see how it's going to look so I can figure out what I'm doing. So, I've got some braces on the wall, and I've got a leg sitting here that I'm going to prop it up with when I get on this end. And I've got one big issue. I'm walking very, very careful because there's these little yellow looking wasps out here and those of you who watch my daily videos know I got stung by a wasp recently who pushed me in the hospital so I'm very very careful here not to disturb anything they get mad one leg up on this corner, then I can get this sized in. Slide it over some. Didn't realize how long this was. Okay, now, that's better. Actually, I think I like how that's going to look. I want to be two feet off to allow the plants underneath to grow happily. There we are. And then the sunlight gets underneath just fine. And I'm going to put another ledge two feet up off that and put shorter plants on the top shelf. So, I've got to line this up and tack it in place. It's going to be fun trying to balance this and line it up. I wonder if I can tack in this board. Anyway, I gotta give this some thought a minute how I'm gonna put this together.
Well guys, there's our first shelf. I got a couple plants on there just to see how it looks. All right, I want to take a short break and then I'll get the other wood over here for the next shelf. And then I'll close off this open end on both sides somehow. It's taking all day because it's all scrap wood. I've got to piece around and scrounge for things to make something happen. But it's all free. I mean, I bought and paid for it long ago for $20 for the load that I made the chicken coop with. So I can't complain. Well, there it is, guys. I'm just going to haul over my plants and call it a night. I've got the two shelves up, and I threw some plants up there just for looks. Now I'm going to really load the plants. I hope they all fit now with those boards, the supporting boards. I hope I can fit enough plants in there. Um, but I had to put enough support because it's going to be a lot of weight, especially over the long term. So, I'll haul them over and see how it looks. Well guys, there it is. I am done. This was a long, hard day. All the herbs and all the garden vegetables that we saved from the freeze are in here together. We got tomatoes and they're bearing fruit. Let me take the camera off the tripod and show you around. We got tomatoes bearing fruit. We have more tomatoes on the vine. Somewhere there's another group. I think there was three groups here with tomatoes on the vine. We've got a recovering hot chili pepper plant. So I will still have a chili harvest. I will have my chili harvest this year. That is exciting. It's flowering and it's growing. We got some bell peppers trying to recover. Uh, we've got sweet potatoes. We've got corn that probably won't make it. We've got another tomato here. Here's another tomato with uh, bearing fruit. Got another pepper plant that isn't doing anything yet. Some of them are in shock, some are recovering. Here's some bell peppers, more hot peppers. This one actually has a chili almost ready. Really nice. So this one is recovering and flowering. And then I got some various plants down here. Well, that's it, everybody. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Good night. I come in and see Melanie has a garden harvest. That's beautiful. Nice little arrangement she put together here. All fresh. And top the day off with a nice solar-cooked meal. Thank you, Melanie. Mm -hmm.